In this video, we're going to go through one of the practical techniques used when studying cells and their organelles. So we're going to go through cell fractionation and ultra centrifugation. Now, this is used if you want to study cell components, so organelles, their structure and their function. And we need to learn the stages involved and some of the key details. So cell fractionation and ultra centrifugation quite long winded, but it's the process of separating cell organelles from each other. Now, this is cell fractionation because you're splitting the cell down into the fractions or the organelles. Then we can separate the organelles according to their mass or their density using centrifugation. So obviously to do this, we're going to have to break up a suitable sample of tissue to get the individual cells and break them open to release the organelles. And then we're going to need to use a centrifuge and centrifuge the mixture at different speeds to separate the organelles based on their mass and density. So it involves three stages, which we're going to go through now. Stage one is homogenization. Stage two is filtration. And stage three is ultra centrifugation itself. So the first stage, homogenization, which you can see here. The first thing we should say is that the tissue sample. Yeah, the cell sample is placed in a cold, in fact, it's ice cold, an ice cold, buffered and isotonic solution. And we're going to go through why all of those three things are important later in the video, so stay tuned. But you will take your tissue sample, which contains the cells with the organelles that you wish to study. You're going to place it in an ice cold, buffered and isotonic solution. And you're going to homogenize the sample. And you can say in a homogenizer, or you can just say blender, because it is basically just a blender. Okay, so you're going to put your tissue sample in, which has been kept in an ice cold, buffered isotonic solution. You're going to put it into the homogenizer, or you can simply say blender. You're going to turn it on, and that is going to break apart the cells and break open the cells to release the organelles. So let's write, write that down as well. It breaks open cells to release the organelles. Okay, the organelles that you wish to study. Once you've done that, you are going to then filter the solution that you have. So you pass through filter paper. And this is to remove any intact cells, so cells that perhaps were not broken apart by the homogenizer, and any cell debris, so anything else that might have been in that tissue sample that you don't want to study that should not have been there. Okay, remember with each of these stages, we do have to like give the reasons, that's what's important. So we're homogenizing our tissue sample to break open the cells and release the organelles. Then we're filtering our sample to remove any intact cells that did not get broken open and any cell debris. You're gonna end up then at the end of this with filtrate, which should contain a mixture of organelles. So nuclei, mitochondria, maybe chloroplasts, if it's plant cells, but there should be no intact cells. There should be no cell debris because they will not pass through the filter. So you've got your mixture of organelles. Now you're gonna centrifuge it. So you're gonna put the filtrate, which is your mixture of organelles into a small tube and centrifuge. Now, a centrifuge is basically a machine that will spin this tube, and we're gonna spin it at increasing speeds, and the centrifugal force is going to help us to separate these organelles. Now, you can see that we need to centrifuge at a higher speed each time we repeat the process, okay? So you're gonna pour your filtrate into your first centrifuge tube. You're going to spin it on the lower speed to start with. You'll get an, a, a pellet with the densest organelle in first. Now the densest organelle will be the nucleus. That will be in the first pellet, which will form at the bottom of the tube. You're then going to pour what we call the supernatant 
which is the liquid part that still remains. You're going to pour the supernatant into the second tube, centrifuge it at a higher speed, and you'll get another pellet, which will contain the next densest organelle at the bottom of the tube. Repeat the process, so pour off the supernatant, centrifuge at a slightly higher speed, and keep repeating the process. Let's have a look at this in a little bit more detail. So centrifugation, the process of centrifugation, separates the cell components or the organelles based on the differences in their mass, or you can say their density, because all organelles have a different mass or a different density, with the nucleus being the densest organelle, then the chloroplasts, if it's a plant cell, then the mitochondria, then maybe the vesicles like lysosomes, then the ribosomes are gonna be the least densest organelle. But we're using this spinning or this centrifugation to separate the organelles based on their mass or density. So the largest or densest components will move to the bottom of the tube first. So when we first of all spin it on low speed, the densest organelle will move to the bottom of the tube first, which is going to be the nuclei, and they're going to form what we call the first pellet, which will be quite solid in the bottom of that tube. Then you're going to pour off what remains of the liquid part, which is called the supernatant, and you're going to spin it at a slightly higher speed, and you're going to get the next densest organelle, which might be the mitochondria, or if it's a plant cell, it would be the chloroplasts that's gonna form the pellet at the bottom of the tube. You're gonna then pour off that supernatant, which contains the remainder of the organelles, spin it at a slightly higher speed, and you'll get your third pellet, which contains the next densest organelle. And again, you can repeat it, pour off the supernatant, spin it at an even higher speed, so you're gradually increasing the speed each time. You'll get the fourth pellet, which contains the next densest organelle and possibly some macromolecules like proteins, and that's how it works. So we're gradually increasing the speed of our centrifuge each time we repeat the centrifugation and each time we're gonna get an organelle in the pellet, densest organelle first, least dense organelle last, okay? So we've managed to separate out the organelles. We're gonna have pure samples of organelles that we can then study. We can study their structure under the microscope. We can study their function, which is why we're doing this in the first place. Okay, now you'll remember at the start of the video, I said it's really important to keep our tissue sample in a solution that is ice cold, buffered and isotonic. Now, a lot of the questions for AQA biology focus on this. So let's go through and explain why the solution that we keep our tissue sample in needs to be ice cold, isotonic and buffered. Okay, so the reason it needs to be ice cold is to slow down enzyme activity. So you, you don't want enzymes to be active, okay? You want the enzymes to be inactive or active at a very, very low rate. And this is so organelles do not get digested by enzymes. Because remember, you want to study these organelles. You want to separate out the organelles based on their mass or their density. And you want to be able to study the structure and function of these organelles. So you don't want them to be damaged. You don't want them to be digested. Remember, these organelles have cell, um, these organelles have membranes which contain proteins. And if you release the organelles and all of the enzymes and the enzymes are active, the enzymes could actually start to digest the organelles damage the organelles, and then you're not going to be able to study their structure or function. So by keeping them in an ice cold solution, we're going to make sure that enzyme activity is really low or really slowed. And that's going to make sure that when we release the contents of the cells, the organelles and the enzymes, the enzymes do not digest the organelles. The solution also needs to be isotonic, which means we want to keep the cells in a solution that has the same water potential as the organelles. And this is so organelles do not lice, which means burst or shrivel or shrink. OK, if the water potential of the solution was higher, water is going to move into the organelles. The organelles could lice or burst. If the water potential of the solution was lower, 
water would start to move out of the organelles, the organelles would start to shrivel and shrink. And remember, we do want to study the structure and function of these organelles, so we don't want them to lice or shrink or shrivel. So we want the solution to be ice cold, so no osmosis take place into or out of the organelles that we wish to study. We also want the solution to be buffered, which means we want to maintain the pH of the solution. And this is so enzymes are not denatured, or you could even say proteins are not denatured. Okay, so you might be thinking that's a bit of a contradiction because we've said for number one, ice cold to slow down enzyme activity. So you might be thinking, well, why do we care if the enzymes are denatured? Well, yes, we want to slow down the enzyme activity because we don't want the enzymes released to digest the organelles, but we don't want to denature the enzymes because remember, we might want to study the function of these organelles and the function of these enzymes later on once we've separated these organelles. So we don't want to actually denature the enzymes. We just want to slow down their activity. Equally, we don't want to denature any of the proteins that might be found other than enzymes within these organelles. Now, one thing that I must say, one of the biggest mistakes that I see students make when they're talking about the solution is they say it needs to be ice cold so cells don't get damaged or it needs to be ice cold so cells don't lice or cells don't shrivel or it needs to be buffered. I suppose you don't you don't talk about it for that one, but guys, the cells, you have literally put the tissue sample into a homogenizer, into a blender and broke open the cells. So we should not be talking about cells. We don't care if the cells are digested. We don't care if the cells burst or the cells shrivel. We've already blended them and broken them open and released the organelles. So this is about the organelles. Please don't make this mistake because we see this so many times in the written responses. Ice cold so organelles do not get digested by enzymes. Isotonic, so organelles do not lice or shrink or shrivel. It's got to be about the organelles because we have already burst the cells open. So make sure you learn one, two, three, the three features of the solution that we are keeping our tissue sample in and make sure you can explain most importantly why the solution needs to be ice cold, isotonic and buffered. And the mark schemes are really specific with how you word these explanations. Just to finish with, let's have a look at a past paper question on this exact topic. So starting with some spinach leaves, describe how you would obtain a sample of undamaged chloroplasts. Use your knowledge of cell fractionation and ultra centrifugation, six marks. So they're telling you we're using cell fractionation and ultra centrifugation and we want to get chloroplasts. These are obviously plant cells. And chloroplast would be the second densest organelle. So let's have a little look at the mark scheme and see if we could answer this question ourselves with what we've learned from this video. Marking point one is about stage one. So it's about homogenization. Remember, we take our tissue sample, we homogenize it or place it in a homogenizer, or you could even say a blender. And this is to break open the cells and release the organelles. So we're giving the reason. Then we're gonna filter, so that was stage two. Filter, again, give the reason to remove any debris or any whole cells or intact cells that were not broken open by the homogenization process. Now, marking points three and four are for giving features of the solution that we're gonna keep our tissue sample in throughout. So we're using isotonic solution, which means a solution that has the same water potential as the organelles. And this is to prevent shrinking or lysis of the chloroplasts or the organelles. Now, the reason they're saying chloroplasts specifically is because the question has asked you to get chloroplasts at the end. So you don't want the chloroplasts to lice or burst or shrink or shrivel, or you can say organelles ignore reference to cells because we've already broken open the cells when we homogenize the sample. So we're gonna ignore any reference to cells and it will not get you credit. We're gonna keep it cold or ice cold. Remember this reduces enzyme activity to reduce digestion of the organelles by enzymes. 
give a reason. We're going to use a buffer. Now remember, a buffer maintains the pH and this prevents the proteins or the enzymes from denaturing. Now on this mark scheme, you could only get one mark for either of those features of the solution. Then we're going to put it into the centrifuge. We're going to spin the tubes initially on a lower speed, although you didn't have to say that to get the mark. But to get the mark, you do have to tell the examiners that in the first pellet, you'll get the nuclei or you can separate out the nuclei or the heaviest or the densest organelle. OK, so you're spinning it initially on a lower speed. The densest organelle will move to the bottom in the pellet. That will be the nuclei. Marking point six, you're going to re-spin it. You have to say at a higher speed for this mark. So you're going to re-spin it or centrifuge it again. You could even use the word supernatant if you're confident with it because you pour off the supernatant. You re-spin it at a higher speed and then you will get the chloroplasts in the pellet or at the bottom of the tube. You must have the location for marking point six. There's quite a lot for marking point six. You need the idea of re-spinning it at a higher speed to get the chloroplasts either in the pellet or at the bottom of the tube because the chloroplasts in a plant cell are the next densest organelle. And then after that, we could do it again and get the mitochondria. We could do it again and get the vesicles or the lysosomes. We could do it again at an even higher speed and get the ribosomes. Okay. I hope you guys have found this video useful. Check out my TikTok, Laura Does Biology, because we are going to be posting some more exam questions on this particular topic. We try to kind of match up the explainer videos on YouTube with the questions that I'm doing on TikTok. So overall, you should get plenty of practice with this particular topic because five, six mark questions do come up on this process semi-regularly, semi I would say. So do make sure you learn it.